The Wii U eShop was notorious for one thing, and that is a lot of bad games. Sure, there were some great titles on there, but the Wii U eShop had like zero restrictions. As long as you could create a functioning manual and a somewhat functioning game, you could put it on the Wii U eShop. So you saw a lot of cheap games, you know, in the $1 to $5 range that were just terrible. They were hardly games. They were more tech demos or a, a you know, class project from a high schooler that somehow released on a Nintendo console. And with the Nintendo Switch, Nintendo definitely has a lot more quality control with the game so far. All of the eShop releases on the Switch have been pretty decent titles, but that does come at a price, literally. Most of these games are at least $10 or up, some of it being $20 or more, and that's fine as long as the game is good, but sometimes you just want to play a cheap game. Sometimes you want to buy something that only costs a couple dollars. Well, there's a new game out on the Nintendo Switch called Kamiko, and it's only $5 on the eShop. So curiosity got the best of me. I plunged down the $5, and I figured that I'd share my thoughts of Kamiko with you guys to see if it's worth it as the first Nintendo eShop game on the Switch that's only five bucks. So is this $5 game worth it? Let's find out. The story of Kamiko is there, but I really wasn't that interested in it. Something about priestesses, demons, you gotta unlock these gates and cleanse the world or whatnot. It's there, but it's definitely presented sort of in an NES style. It's more of an afterthought, and it's just something to get you interested in the game, and it does do that. And there's a little intro cutscene that sort of explains everything, and then you're thrust into the game world. Now, when you start up the game, you choose one of three different priestesses. And at first, I thought they were just, you know, cosmetic differences, maybe a little different in terms of what their weapon is, but actually all three characters are pretty unique in terms of weapons, speed, and special attacks. So there is sort of an incentive to go back and play as all three characters if you like the style of gameplay that the game offers. Now the game takes place in a top-down perspective, and the first thing you'll notice are the visuals. The presentation in this game is very, very good. I love the use of colors. I love that sort of pseudo 8 slash 16-bit style. That yeah, it's something we've seen a lot of, but it's done really well in this game and another key area that I really find great is the music the music in this game is top-notch I really enjoyed the variety of tracks and it just was really well composed really good music so once you get into the game you choose your character and you're put in this top-down perspective the basis of the game is pretty simple on the map there's four different areas that have these little fire statues and you must take them out you must cleanse them and that cleanses the world and then you must go and go into a center area and you go to a boss battle but along the way you have to find keys and different items minimal puzzle solving but as the game progresses it gets a little bit trickier um there is a good difficulty slider as far as you know level one to level two it's a good progression meter and it's it's solid you know i like the puzzle solving mechanics there's a few areas that are bonus areas that you can get to as well that help soup up your character either give them more life or um, more uh, SP, which basically you get SP by linking combos and defeating enemies. The more enemies you defeat in a combo, the quicker your SP meter fills up, which is the little blue bar. And the benefit of that is you can do special attacks. By holding down the attack button, you'll do a special attack. Um, the character I like to use would clear the whole screen with like this mirror attack and it would just spin around and take everything out. Very, very cool. And then once you extinguish the four little flames, you go to a boss battle. And the boss battles are pretty cool. The music changes up and there's a boss theme, you know, area. It's a little short, smaller area. But what you do is basically there's a weak spot on the boss and you hit that weak spot, rinse and repeat. Now, one of the drawbacks of the game is that there are only four levels in the game. So that means the game is over pretty quick. I downloaded it earlier this afternoon. I finished it this afternoon, but that was with only one character. I did decide to go back and start playing as another character and I found it still rewarding and still refreshing So it took me about an hour an hour and a half to get through my first run of the game But I think the game is designed with that every time you defeat a level you get a time um, It gives you your time basically so it's sort of like a time attack game now it's only five dollars if the game you know was a 10 15 dollar game and you're only getting a couple hours of gameplay then yeah i probably wouldn't pick it up but considering the aesthetics of the game considering how good it looks how good it sounds and the gameplay is very solid the puzzle mechanics are simple 
but fun, and a couple times they get a little bit tricky. I think Cameco is a great $5 investment. If you're looking just for something to pick up and play, something you could beat in a couple sittings, Cameco is definitely a game you should check out. So the first cheap game on the Switch's eShop is definitely a winner in my opinion. Have you checked out this game? If so, what do you think about it? Make sure you let me know in the comments section down below. And thank you for watching this video. I will catch you guys next time. Later. Take it back.